Welcome to MrClap.com's review of Supreme Court decisions brought to you by Noble Review, concise review books. The first Supreme Court decision that you have to know is Marbury v. Madison. This was John Marshall's court decision which declared part of the Judiciary Act of 1789 unconstitutional. It was the first example in the United States of judicial review, or the power of the Supreme Court to determine if a law is constitutional or not. Marbury was looking for a writ of mandamus, which was a court order instructing Secretary of State James Madison to deliver a job commission. However, though the act said Marbury could go directly to the Supreme Court to get such a writ, the Constitution said otherwise, and the Constitution is the highest law of the land. Marshall used the Constitution to strike down this law. Other John Marshall decisions include McCulloch v. Maryland, which declared federal supremacy for the National Bank, Gibbons v. Ogden, which reaffirmed federal supremacy regarding interstate commerce, Cohen's v. Virginia, which allowed the U.S. Supreme Court to review state court decisions, and both Fletcher v. Peck and Dartmouth College v. Woodward, which stated that contracts are binding. If a John Marshall question comes up on your test, always remember that he favored strengthening both the court and the federal government. Marshall was still around in 1832 for the Worcester v. Georgia decision, in the wake of the Indian Removal Act, the court ruled that Georgia could not legislate for or forcefully take away Cherokee lands. However, President Andrew Jackson questioned Marshall's ability to enforce the decision. Regarding slavery, the Dred Scott v. Sanford case saw Chief Justice Roger B. Tawney deny the rights of slaves. Dred Scott was a slave who was taken into free soil, but then was demanded to return the bondage. The court ruled that slaves were property and couldn't even sue in court. The Missouri Compromise was also declared unconstitutional because according to the Fifth Amendment, a slave owner could not be deprived of their slave property. The Insular Cases were a series of decisions in the early 1900s which stated that constitutional rights did not always extend into U.S. territories acquired in the age of imperialism. An important court case to know is Shank v. the United States. Charles Schenck was a socialist who distributed thousands of leaflets containing damaging language against the World War I draft. He was arrested for violating the Espionage Act. Were these leaflets just free speech? Well, the court ruled that free speech was not absolute, and he was creating a panic. After all, one can't utter something that creates a clear and present danger. That would be equivalent to shouting fire in a theater. During the New Deal, President Franklin Roosevelt battled the Supreme Court. In Schechter Poultry Corporation versus the United States, the National Industrial Recovery Act was declared unconstitutional, as the president was creating laws unconstitutionally. In the United States versus Butler, the Agricultural Adjustment Act was a violation of federalism, or the division of powers between the state and federal governments. During World War II, the government relocated Japanese Americans to internment camps. Fred Korematsu refused to report. He believed that his 14th Amendment rights of equality were being violated. However, the Supreme Court protected President Roosevelt's Executive Order 9066. They said it was constitutional to expand executive powers during a time of war. The 14th Amendment is also important for understanding the two most important civil rights cases. Plessy v. Ferguson was a setback for civil rights. Homer Plessy sat on a whites-only railroad car, which violated the Separate Car Act of Louisiana. The Supreme Court ruled that separate but equal was the law of the land, and the races could be separate if facilities were equal. But facilities rarely were, as was proven over 50 years later in the Brown versus the Board of Education decision. Earl Warren's court ruled that separate but equal was inherently unequal, and segregation began to crumble. Regarding Earl Warren's court, you need to know that he had liberal decisions which expanded the rights of the accused. In Miranda v. Arizona, the court ruled that although Ernesto Miranda admitted to rape and kidnapping, he was not read his rights, so he did not know that he had a right to remain silent. The controversial decision expanded rights for the accused and changed forever the way law enforcement does their job. In Gideon v. Wainwright, Clarence Gideon was accused of breaking into a billiards establishment in Florida. However, the state would not appoint him a lawyer. He was found guilty, but upon appeal, it was ruled that Gideon did not get a fair trial because his Sixth Amendment rights to an attorney and fair trial were denied. In Mapp v. Ohio, Dollary Mapp's house was searched by the police as they were looking for a fugitive, but what they found instead was a lot of pornography. The court ruled that that search was in violation of the Fourth Amendment, as the cops must have a specific warrant 
for the seizure of evidence. Roe v. Wade legalized abortion in 1973, though not in all cases. Women's privacy was ruled protected by the Ninth Amendment's reservation of rights, the Fourth Amendment's right to privacy, and the Fourteenth Amendment's protection of personal liberty. For a Social Studs music video about Supreme Court decisions, click here. For more review, you can get free flashcards and review sheets at mrclaff.com. We also invite you to check out Noble Review in both paperback and ebook formats. Best of luck on your tests.